Hey guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to be going through basically a walkthrough of how to initially set up your Roku player uh, out of box. I have a lot of different videos that go through and kind of explain how to fix different issues with the Roku player. I have videos uh, dedicated to things like how to unfreeze it if it's frozen, how to pair a remote, and also uh, I have another video where I had a remote that wasn't pairing in the process I went through to get it to work, um, how to hook it up to the internet, different things like that. But most people are going to run into issues just setting it up initially uh, right out of the box. So I'm going to go through, uh, this is a Roku 3 player, but it's going to be fairly similar uh, if you have different Roku devices. Um, let me just unplug this HDMI real quick. So you're going to need an HDMI cord. Uh, they don't sell them with the player. So uh, that's a big thing that you're going to need if you have a Roku 3, a Roku 4, a Roku 2. If you have a Roku stick, uh, it should have a little thing in the back that looks like this where you just plug it right into the HDMI port in the back of your TV. Uh, but this one you're going to have to first plug in the HDMI cable into the back of your Roku player and then the other end you're going to find the HDMI uh, inputs on the back of your TV or wherever they may be located. And I plugged it into the HDMI 1. So this particular TV has four HDMI inputs. And before we get uh, going here, make sure that you're in the right input for your television. So on your remote, you know, in this particular remote, it's called source. It could be something different on your, it just depends on what kind of remote you have. I've seen a remote where it, it'll say like HDMI and all the other options and you'll just click the HDMI button. But so on this particular one, I click source and that, uh, shows all the different options that my TV has. I got TV, AV, all these other different ones. But uh, as I said earlier, mine's hooked into HDMI 1, so I'm going to click OK on that. So now I'm hooked up to the right source for my Roku player. And the next thing I'm going to do is make sure the remote is ready to be paired before I power on the uh, Roku 3 itself. So right now this is an unpaired remote that came with this particular player and they should provide batteries um, you know, with it. So you make sure you're plugging in the batteries to the right direction on the back of the remote and then close up the uh, little case. And now you see that uh, you're getting this blinking on the remote. That means it's ready to be paired to the uh, Roku player. So the next thing we're gonna do is plug in the power on the back. Uh, that's also this plug here plugged into the uh, socket there. And once it's got power, it's gonna go into this, um, the starting screen here for the Roku player. And the important thing at this step is making sure that the remote is blinking or whatever so that it's ready to be paired once the Roku player officially uh, gets all the way through its startup process. So like I said, this particular remote is unpaired right now and uh, the um, Roku player itself is gonna be going through its uh, setup phase. Uh, right now you can see it's connecting to the internet or trying to connect. And as you can see, um, it didn't show up this particular time but um, that green blinking light went away, which means that my remote's now paired and ready to go. Uh, sometimes it'll take it a little bit longer and you'll actually see it on the screen that it's pairing. Uh, it'll say, you know, it'll have like a picture of the remote and say that it's pairing. Um, but this time, as it was going through that setup phase, it was pairing before it got to this home page, so we didn't see that. Um, then the next thing that you're going to want to do when you get things started up here, you're right on the home page to start. Uh, you can go down to settings to set up your internet. So once you're on settings, you can click OK on your remote and it'll take you And the first option is network. So we'll click OK on network. And uh, if you're going to hook up through a wire directly to your Roku player, uh, as you can see on the back, there's an Ethernet port where you can connect an Ethernet cable to the back of your uh, Roku player and have that go to your router and plug it in the back there if you want to do a wired connection. But uh, we're going to do wireless here. So we'll go over to where it says set up wireless connection, click OK. It's going to scan for um, wireless signals in the area. 
Um, as you can see, all my different neighbors have, um, you know, different names for their wireless routers. I named mine wireless pretty easy. And you can also see uh, these little locks. That just means that they're password protected. And I highly recommend that you have your wireless router password protected so other people can't use your um, Wi-Fi for free. So you just click on whichever one is yours and you're gonna click in your router password. Um, you know, your password, if you set it yourself, it's gonna be that or else usually these wireless routers uh, come with a prepackaged password. If you don't change it, it can be kind of a confusing password, but you just wanna type that in there and then click connect. And if your password's right, you should get those three check marks there. And now it says I'm connected to the internet as you can see, status connected, uh, wireless connected, and the signal strength is excellent. And I recommend that you have your um, signal strength in that excellent to very good or good range. If it's below that, you could have issues with running apps on your Roku player. Um, you know, things that will help, uh, obviously being close to your modem but also having the Roku player like not in a shelf or in a cabinet or something where it would get the uh, signal blocked from it. That's gonna be, um, or you know, if it has to go through a lot of floors or walls, that signal, it's gonna be weakened. So those are just some things to keep in mind there. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be the most important stuff with setting up your Roku player is getting it on the right HDMI source. For me, it's HDMI one. Um, pairing the remote is really important and then also getting that uh, internet set up is going to be another really important thing after that uh, it's pretty much up to you what you want to do with your roku player as you can see uh, to get back to the home page you just click the home button there at the top uh, i got all these different apps here i can watch youtube twitch tv playstation view sling all the i don't necessarily have subscription to all these different things i maybe had them the great thing about all of these uh, subscription services is uh, they're usually uh, non-contract. I've never seen any of these online streaming services that are contracted. So, you know, you can try out PlayStation View, maybe get it for a month if you don't use it. You can try out, you know, Sling TV. And what uh, PlayStation View and Sling TV are more just traditional cable packages that you get through your internet. And it's usually at a significantly discounted price. I know Sling has like a $20 TV package, $25 TV package, and PlayStation View is in that, you know, I think like $30 to $50 range. Um, you know, you got Watch ESPN, HBO, Hulu, Netflix. I really like the CBS News app because it's free. <laughs> Amazon Video and all, the, all this other stuff. So uh, to get these apps, I'll just go through that real quick. You can uh, search for them. Or actually, you know, you go to the streaming channels and then they'll have like featured ones, new ones, the most popular. You probably want to go to the most popular channels and then just download the ones that you're going to want to use for whatever uh, services you have. Maybe you have a Netflix account, maybe you have a Hulu account, maybe you have a Sling TV account. And then there are other apps like YouTube is free. CBS News is free, uh, just stuff like that. So. And then once you get those apps up and downloaded, then you can just go back to your homepage, click on them, fire them up, and you'll now get that content on your TV screen. So uh, that's pretty much going to wrap things up for this video. I hope this was helpful. If you guys have other issues that you might run into during setup, you can put those in the comment area and maybe other people that are watching this video can um, you know, help you with some of your questions if they're easier to answer or if I get around to it I can uh, maybe answer it myself but um, also I have other videos in my channel that describe how to fix some of the more common Roku issues that you might run into so if you head on over to my channel you can get those videos and also if you subscribe um, you can get those as well so thanks guys for watching and we'll see you in the next uh, Roku video uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you then bye